Hi DIYers, Joe from Alarmgrid, and today we're going to talk about how to enroll a key fob to our Simon XT system. Now, the system can hold up to 40 different zones, and each key fob is only going to occupy one zone in system programming. At the central station, the, the zone that the key fob is programmed to, that is the zone that is going to come in on the signal report, and it will work like that. Now, the key fob can be programmed into the system in a few different ways for a few different functions, mainly concerning the panic button on the key fob. If you go into the installation manual for the actual Simon XT, that's where you're gonna find information about the key fob, and that's where you'll figure out how you best want it to be programmed. If you did buy a <clears throat> key fob that we're gonna be using today, this is an Interlogix key fob, a 1094. The installation manual for this isn't going to tell you anything about programming uh, to the Simon system, so definitely check out the Simon install guide and that'll tell you the different things that we're about to review. Now, the key fob, based on the group number that it's programmed into the system as, that's going to tell it how the key fob is supposed to work. There's four different groups that are recommended to be used for the key fob. They're going to be groups number one, groups number three, groups number six, and groups number seven. Groups number one has the panic button on the key fob active, and it's gonna have it as an audible police panic. Group number three has the panic button active, and it has as a silent police panic. Group number six has the panic button active, and it has it as a medical or auxiliary button, which means that it won't sound the main alarm, but it will have the system beep. It's great to be used, as I said, for medical panic or other such thing. And then group number seven is a portable auxiliary button, which we're not going to review today. Most likely you'll be using groups one, groups three, or group six to program in your key fob. Now on the system, it programs in like any other security sensor. Uh, everything on our system is defaulted. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is go into system programming. As you can see, we're on the main disarm screen. It's going to press down, 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 there you go. So system programming. We're going to click OK to confirm. And then our default, our codes are all default. So we're going to do four, three, two, one, and OK. Now we're in uh, the programming submenu. So if we press down, we want to access the zones. So right here is sensors. That's where we want to be. We're going to hit OK to go into that. And then right here it says learn sensor. So we click OK. So it's saying to trip the sensor. So now if we take our key fob and I press and hold the top two buttons, it just learned the sensor in and now it's prompting us to enter the group number for the sensor. As you can see, you can enter really any group number. So you're going to want to make sure that you do pick the right one or your key fob may not work as expected. For now, let's set it to be an audible police panic. So if I go up, you'll see that the group number changes, or actually down. That's the direction we want to go. And it's going to toggle between the different groups that are available. So group number one, that's what we want. So I'm going to click OK. And then it's going to jump down. It's going to let us change the alpha for the zone. We want to name it what it is. So I believe if we look for the key fob, we have a preset name called keychain. So we can click OK. And then you're going to see that a little digit or cursor opens up next to it which you can click to add a second word to the uh, descriptor if you like. I believe if I click status, we go back. OK, cool. I didn't want to enter that word. So if you have an edit in here that you don't want, if you click status, it's going to jump you back to the previous menu. And then you'll be able to redo the programming and set it in the way that you would like. So as you can see, it's telling us to trip again. So I'm going to trip the fob. I'm going to set it to group number one. Click OK, and then I'm going to go down until it says Keychain, and I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click OK just to confirm that, and then we're all set. See how it says trip sensor number three? That means that the key fob is enrolled into zone number two. We have a security sensor in zone number one. So we can use the key fob now, or we should be able to use the key fob to arm and disarm the system and use the panic button. So I'm going to click status to go back, status, 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 status. Now we're back on the main screen. So now that we have our key fob programmed into the system, it should work as we had programmed it. 
the unlock button is going to unlock, the lock button is going to arm, and let, let's see what that actually does. So if I press the lock button, you'll see that it says doors and windows. So one press means that the system is going to just arm the doors and windows. This is your stay mode on the system. If I press the lock button again, it's going to do the doors, the windows, and the motions. So that would be your away setting on your system. Now if I click the unlock button, you'll see that we're disarmed. And then the little light down here, what this is going to do, if I click that, it's going to turn all the lights off. So if you do have lights uh, program to the system via Z-Wave, you'll actually be able to use your key fob to just click this button really quickly and then it'll turn all your lights off when you're leaving the house. This last button is our police panic and because I don't feel like having my ears bleed this morning, I'm not going to press that, but if you do press and hold that, it will trigger a loud panic from the system. That's how you program in a key fob to your Simon XT. Thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to subscribe. If you want to be updated when we post future videos, click the update button below and we'll send you an update when we do so. If you have any alarm questions about alarm systems or alarm monitoring, head over to our website, www.alarmgrid.com. Give us a call at 888-818-7728 or send us an email to support at alarmgrid.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.